Hey everyone, we're here with Garrett from Mall. If you don't know him, you're fucking missing out. Um, they are fucking fantastic. Great death metal. Um, in the Jaws of Bereavement is the new album coming out. I'm gonna get this wrong, so I, I just gonna preface it. Is it October fourth? It is October fourth. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You did not get it wrong. Good job. Don't sell yourself. Don't sell yourself short. Come on now. <laughs> well, I was. Uh, there was another one, uh, uh, another band has one coming out October 11th, uh, okay. hell is other people. And they're like, they're described as black gays. So that's it's a, like, fan, that's a fantastic band name, by the way. Hell is other people. It is. They're, they're really a fucking fantastic band. Okay. Fuck. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So th in the jaws of bereavement, it is your first with first full length right with 20 bucks spin yeah it's the first full length yep uh we did an ep with them last year killer and you guys are are like a relatively new band right um i would say for i mean yeah i would say for the general public of people getting to know us for sure but i mean we've been we've been playing shows since 2017 okay so you know we're coming up on seven years um in october but yeah, uh, for the for the general public, for the for the big gaze of uh, things, yeah, we're we're pretty fucking new still. Um, but we've been touring nonstop for the last three years. Um, I would say post shutdown pandemic is like yeah. when we really started gaining our, like during that and after that is when we started gaining uh, traction oh, and people knowing us. So yeah, yeah, pretty pretty new is still for the for the grand scheme for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's you know, and it's so crazy because you're like, oh yeah, we've been playing for seven years, and I'm like, oh fuck, you guys are still super new to me. Like, damn it, you know. That's okay. I wish. Yeah, uh, that's all right. <laughs> I don't ever take uh, offense to anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, like even okay. with you know, like twenty bucks spin or uh, even the label before redefining darkness. Like those are all such big steps up compared to what we we're doing. Yeah. Um. Because we've always just been DIY, so a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, yeah, I don't ever take it offensive by any means. <laughs> now that the growth and fan base, I think for a band is what they're always looking for, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, so, uh, God, so you guys been touring pretty pretty regularly post pandemic. What what does your like when you guys go out? Do you go out for like a month, a couple of weeks, or? Or what's that look like? I mean, we've done we've done a little bit of it all. Um, I would say that sweet spot for us is that two to three weeks um, where it works just with like home lives, work lives, um, general fatigue. You know what I mean? Like it is it is still it's not glamorous by any means to tour, but then put that into DIY death metal touring. You know, it's even more niche, a little bit more. Yeah. Um, We've thankfully been uh, doing well enough for over the past couple of years. We bought a fucking shuttle bus where we built bunks into it and stuff. So we're a lot, way more comfortable than we've ever been on tour. Um, and this last year proves that for sure, um, where all six of us can have a full six foot lay down spot. You know what I mean? But there's still benches. We have a TV and a fridge now. But, uh, you know, we've, we've, accumulated that uh, all through touring the last few years and just invested it all into this project which was the bus the 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 touring rig the casa de la mall we call it um <laughs> um yeah uh that's been the lifestyle of the band that's kind of always the like idea of the mall is to tour so we're just trying to make it as more comfortable as possible you know we're doing uh we're doing per diems with the with the guarantees and the merch cuts we're you know or not the merch cuts but the merch um sales uh taking out of the equation of airbnbs and hotels with the with the bus so we can just stay at like a loves or stay at wherever we're you know platinum fitness wherever we're doing um take care of ourselves in the morning um 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot the original question. <laughs> it's like uh i was we were just talking i i asked about like touring for you all what that looked like on a a length oh yeah yeah so comfortable lengths of it and stuff yeah i mean we're we're pretty comfortable with a month like i said that sweet spot is two or three weeks um where it's just like you know the fatigue wears in maybe you're uh Again, it's just not a. It's not the the greatest lifestyle. It's definitely fun. It's definitely what we resonate with. But uh, you know, I don't know. We've never been in a situation where we've been like offered or putting together more than a month. Yeah. Um. It's not that we wouldn't be against it. It's just that we haven't done it yet. You know what I mean? Like on that on that scale of being a new band, you know, like the most we've done is like 34 days, like, you know, it was like 30 shows or 31 shows, you know, it was still yeah, a lot. But... That's all that is, you know, I, I, I think, I don't, th- I think a lot of newer bands don't understand what all goes into a month long tour. Right. Cause it's, you know, you guys have a bus now, but shit, you spend a, m- a month in the van and it's like, God, this sucks. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. And we've done month long runs in the van. And, you know, obviously not taking away from any band that's done longer in a van, but, um, you know, it sucks to try to pretend to fall asleep uh, sitting upright, yeah. doing the lean, doing the things like uh, and driving a bunch. There's only a limit of us that are uh, able, willing to drive. Um, so, yeah, those cycles obviously are tiring. But when you add in the bunks that we built and invested in, it's uh, it makes it a little bit nicer um hell yeah it does yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> you know, s- save money on hotels and whatnot because those like that shit gets expensive absolutely like you know, we're, we're in those situations now where we're at truck stops and it's like 16 to 18 dollars to shower and like sometimes that's really fucking worth it you know what i mean it's a yeah. lot more worth it than a 120 to 180 dollar room at a hotel you know what i mean like yeah for essentially the same amount of sleep and the <laughs> the shower, you know what I mean? The shower is the biggest part. Like that's your alone time. That's your fucking cleansing. That's uh, yeah, it's just good for the mind. So Hell you yeah, know those is. those truck stop showers, sh- truck stop showers <laughs> come in handy. Yeah, that they do. Uh, you know, Planet Fitness. I think Planet Fitness has has been great for a lot of touring musicians too, because you spend you know, 10 or 20 bucks a month on the thing. And it's like, oh, we can all go in for that 20 bucks and fucking yep. get showered up. Yep. And that's always sick. Yeah. That's always really nice. So um, is yeah. there like a, a favorite place for you to, to hit when you tour? Just like a standard or like for yeah. anything? Or... Yeah. Like when you guys, you know, say, I mean, primarily, like as as far as club goes, right? Like, oh, we really like hitting this place in this town because, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, we've got a lot of like hometown feels in the Midwest, just based off of like our previous touring schedule and like what's close to us, what we can get to in three, four days. So there's a lot of very, very prevalent venues in the country that I would say, like, proudly um like the x-ray arcade in milwaukee um they, their whole thing is like the most infamous venue or whatever the most famous i can't remember what i now i'm gonna fuck up the the thing but uh <laughs> um you know and they're just outside of milwaukee they're actually in kudahi wisconsin um but it's like as far as the venue experience the sound the staff the stage um the green room like it's it's literally one of the it's one of the best venues in the country um not as far as capacity by any means but like for what we deal with and everything yeah x-ray arcade is beautiful um again in that sense like gabe's in iowa city iowa city iowa like these are all places that like I mean, Milwaukee maybe a little bit more, but like I feel like people look would look over genuinely of like even stopping in these cities. But there's there's the stages and sounds and the staff and the the crowd that comes out for some of these shows in the Midwest. It's just so hungry. Like so, we're we're a band based off of that like Midwestern desolated 
fucking hunger yeah. of uh there's shit going on here we're passionate we're fucking here so um yeah i think that ties in a lot as far as like my connection to venues and stuff otherwise we're looking at like you know texas uh little rock um for for scenes that really really resonate with us um san diego and shit for the weather <laughs> oh yeah for sure for for what we for what we vibe with for what we know for what we've always worked with and like growing up with like those midwestern venues like that are very near and dear that's cool i think a lot of people uh you know everyone i feel like they sleep on the midwest a lot you know because when everyone talks it's primarily they're looking at at the coast the east and the west coast oh i like this place for this and not taking anything away from them because, you know, like everywhere has got, I think some great venues, you know, Detroit's got sanctuary, which is still, you know, relatively yeah. new, but a fucking killer place, you know? Yep. Um, but, but all over the place. And I don't know, I, I grew up in the Midwest, you know, so, so to, to have those venues and to know like, Oh, I can go like you guys plan, you're playing Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. Yep, yep. Hoosier Dome, but Black Circle's another one, which is fucking fantastic. We love Black Circle. We yeah. love Black Circle. For there are two, three times. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah. A lot, a lot of really good shows, uh, places to have shows in the region, which is yeah. it's fucking fantastic. And, and promoters and staff that are supporting yeah. and uh, the hospitality and the... Uh, the promotion behind it you know what i mean that goes a long way for a lot of touring bands and i just don't think a lot of bands outside of the midwest understand the the benefits of doing these like uh so-called middle and nowhere spots you know what i mean right um, like even even for you for louisville i know it gets a little bit more traction we were talking about time zones earlier and shit mm -hmm. but like i don't know i just feel like the midwest I mean, for sure, for us, you know, we're always we're always playing in front of 150, 250 people in the Midwest because they're fucking hungry for it. They're ready yeah. for it. They know the bands that are doing those cycles. And there's so many big tours that look at it as not even a B or a C right. type uh, town. Um, so, yeah, we make our home in that. You know what I mean? We've been building that for years, just like just based off of our own work schedules and getting to know people and being able to go where we can in three, four days, seven days, building it up, building it up more and more to be able to get to the East coast to get to the West coast. Yeah. But like we're, we're from the middle of nowhere. So we get it. So we put on, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, you know, and that's great. I mean, obviously, um, you know, we've, I think we've got some really good bands here and it's, in in recent years it used to be you'd go out and you'd see you know five or six people at, at some of these local shows and uh, i'll say probably over the last 10 10 or so years the local shows are getting a lot more uh traction you know a lot more people are coming out and it's like fuck good you know support the support the scene let's let's see what kind of talent we we can have come out we've got some killer fucking talent here that i'm just like every time i see him i'm just like blown away like redivider yeah. do you know redivider yeah, i love redivider Dude. i love redivider we played with them twice i was just gonna i was just thinking of like louisville bands i could shout out like yeah yeah absolutely redivider fucking pissed on yeah um dude yeah, yeah absolutely volcandra's fucking doing good things like fuck yeah fuck yeah oh, i'm not dude. familiar but Wow. Uh, I know that Louisville has a scene, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Um God. So now I'm I'm gonna say I, I want you guys to come back to Louisville because you know. Yeah, we will. We absolutely will. Hell yeah. Uh we so, got, like you said, we got Indy Indy in October, but uh I would expect springtime. We got a couple of routing dates I gotta still book up myself, so Cool. I expect we'll be back in the little. Yeah, Kill. absolutely. Killer. Let's get Redivider on that fucking bill. Yeah, right. I might try to get them on a few shows, actually. Hell yeah. Good. That's I'm... the beauty of being able to book, still be DIY. Is like I can bring homies that I know we fuck with, that yeah. I know what it's sick, and be like, hey, 
I already booked the dates. Come with us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, come on. Let's do it. I'm going to tell you something funny. Redivider, I, I kept trying to see him. And uh, every time, like, something came up, like, I had to work or take care of kids or, you know, do something. And so finally, I go to Indianapolis to Black Circle. They were doing Death in the Midwest. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, Redivider's here. I'm not missing it. We are right fucking here. And so I buy a fucking Redivider shirt. I'm super stoked. I'm like, let's fucking go. Two bands before someone hits a telephone pole outside the fucking electric shuts off for a minute. Yeah. 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 I heard about that because our homies uh, deterioration were on that show. Yeah. They were headlining. Yep. Yep. And I was like, like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Well, the power came back on real quick and I was like, oh yeah, dude, we're, this is going to be good. It was, uh, it was Yotuma that was fucking, that was playing when they, they hit it. Then, uh, fuck, what was the other band? I don't remember. So the next band fucking gets up two songs in all the power shuts off and they're like, okay, show's over. No. Just cut it off. Damn. Yeah. Well, they, they, someone hit the telephone pole outside and fucking they were out there trying to fix it. No, no clue on timeline. So. Also shout out you too much. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Man. Fucking yeah. awesome. Man. Love those dudes. Um, Sorry that we got me. <laughs> now I know. I see. <laughs> I still hit it. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so in the jaws of bereavement, what was, what was the writing process like for you guys with that? Um, on a few different levels, it was just like, okay, here we go. Um, we went from never wanting to write a full length to, you know, two years later, we're writing our second full length. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it was definitely a, just like a chaotic time. Um, I've gone through some of the darkest shit that I've been through. Um, personally, keeping this going, I knew we had the December tour. We did like two weeks in December around uh, our second Banging in the Rock in Little Rock uh, appearance, that a great fest. Um, and we were writing this. It was just a. Uh, it was kind of a blur for me in a lot of in a lot of ways, uh, but like we were still meeting up pretty regularly. We always write as a full group at the rehearsal spot, like so every song is has everybody dialed in, everybody pitching shit. Um, um, it was it was just like a wild time because we knew the uh the busyness of our next year which was you know already the last six months seven months like we were booked through june july in november basically um so as we were as i was getting all that together we were writing these songs i'm coming up with different moods and different attachments to the songs and then writing the lyrics um and like I said, during a dark time. So it was just kind of like a, a whirlwind of just like, okay, here we go. Like we, we have this connection. We know how everybody vibes. We know the capabilities we have of like different people writing or different people taking charge or just like, Hey, I have this idea. And I'm like, fuck yeah, let's, let's run with that. Yeah. Like there was a, there was probably a, honestly only like two song ideas that got, scrapped for a different better idea that made the album so um we're looking at 12 songs maybe out of and that made the cut that made the like okay let's write more on this let's um i don't think i had song I, or like lyric ideas for those other two it was just these ones felt more powerful so let's continue on those and that's the cool thing about all of us being involved is just like we know what mall sounds like or what yeah. mall is to us so it doesn't have to fit a box it just has to pass the the vibe test of all five or six of us you know what i mean <laughs> yeah well that you know i think that's the cool thing about about bands like because you listen through in the jaws of bereavement 
and obviously they all have a very similar style, but, but each of them are very unique, you know, like you can tell when you're, when you listen to it, that you're not listening to the same first song. Whereas, you know, you listen to some, some bands, I, I won't call them out like uh, ACDC, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like they're great, but I, I like a band that's willing to experiment a little bit and get out, you know, and, and do something new in, in a song. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and like a lot of things, a lot of things that I like listening to are kind of on that vibe of like, I want this tone. Yeah. So I know who to hit up, you know what I mean? And then I'm going to listen to that whole album or I'm going to listen to a, a Spotify. This is, you know what I mean? List. Yeah. Cause like, I don't really know what songs I want. I don't know what album I want, but I want that sound and this band hits it. Yeah. And that's sick. You know what I mean? Um, I'd like to think that Maul definitely has a like, oh yeah, that sounds like Maul, but also I don't know if many of our songs necessarily are uh, under this exact same umbrella, you know what I mean? Some sure. of them are a lot different energy, a lot more upbeat or more hardcore or sludge, a little more doom, um, a, a way more uh, experimental doom, like in the atmospheric, like yeah black metal side of it um like so like that's just kind of all of our influences coming together and yeah. we're not like we're not trying to sound like anything we just are fucking down with all the things we like so it's like you know, I don't know yeah well you know in my mind that's where bands have longevity is they're not like okay we have to be we have to sound this very specific way it's like well well shit let's like no i like this and i like this and it it's okay to like all of this and let those influences bleed over into the music. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I've taught of this a couple of times on some different things, but like, I mean, not that there's a dig or anything that they don't absolutely not listen to it, but like there's three, four of our members that don't even like actively fanboy over death, death metal. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I do. I always have for a while, but I've always fanboyed about a bunch of different extremes. Our drummer, but there's like, you know, two of our guitarists, our bassists, you know, into hardcore, into metalcore, into all things uh, legendary metal and uh, kind of up-to-date stuff, but not necessarily like oh shit, this is what Undeath is doing, or this is what Sanger yeah. Sugar is doing. You know what I mean? We're not like trying to do that at all we're like we're down with like our influences of lamb of god and kill switch engage and fucking the things we grew up on while also mixing in like some of our up-to-date like uh in that underground hardcore scene of like sabalba and suburban scum and even i say up to date but these are all like 2013 14 yeah. um you know, you know what i mean like that was our introduction to uh, diy music and like seeing how the music scene can and really does work you know what i mean yeah i think um, i think that was a lot of people right so you had like i'm a little bit older right so growing up in in the you know 80s and 90s watching the punk scene where that was all diy and right so you've got the the national punk and then you know like especially the new york hardcore scene was they were they were all fucking diy and to see those bands like i remember like reading stories of sick of it all before I got to see them live. And they're, they're telling their story of going from, you know, 50 or 75 people a night in, in clubs to 3000 people a night, you know? And it's like, Holy fuck, you, you did this on your own, mm -hmm. you know? And, and metal was cool, but I feel like metal at that point, um, wasn't so much DIY. There was a lot of no, DIY, perfect. but, but it was, fuck, it was attached to a label or a producer or something that, that had a following that was like, oh, I like this dude for this reason, so I'm going to listen to what he's doing. Yeah. You know? No, and absolutely. So so my introduction to that was like, I grew up in metalhead. You know, I got into the death metal. I got into heavier and heavier, into the grindcore, fucking obscure shit. Uh, I didn't really know a local music scene until it was like the DIY hardcore punk scene. Yeah. And that was already 
fully into metal and all this kinds of shit. So I'm talking like 2008, 9, 10, really into 2012, where I really learned like bringing through these really cool bands that are like, you know, they have a lot of hype, like, or, you know, I mean, essentially fast forward to like where we're at right now, like these types of bands um, coming through small towns, small areas of just like, you know, routing because it's, we're booking these ourselves through people we might know or bands we might know. Yeah. So that connection never, ever hit me until those times. Um, and it was cool. It was so sick because like my only my only things before that was like hit parader and fucking yeah. um you know like the magazines that were coming out um <laughs> oh i think i lost you oh you muted <laughs> uh, where it was like oh shit you can have this national touring band in a basement full of 80 to 130 yeah. kids or whatever where it became like tangible of like oh fuck this is like right here this is like you know so that that kind of connection is super fucking cool to me and that's where definitely the spirit of mall has always been because we've always been like metal kids always been but like the spirit the work ethic of everything has always come from diy hardcore punk because that's what we got shown yeah well and you know that's i think that's where i mean that's where i like to live i love to see bands that are like cool like we don't need a fucking label to support us we're gonna go and we're gonna do our thing whatever that looks like right and they carve their own path like like um right now a big one for me is hemorrhage out of san francisco you know those dudes they're like pull up outside a show as the show's letting out. They do their 30 or 45 minute set, get shut down and move on. That shit but, is crazy. See that bus and everything. Yeah. yeah. That's a while. <laughs> that's and so like, so they've, they've done it so much that now they've been invited to play louder than life and aftershock, like on stages, like how fucking that's, that's what every band, you know, wants is they want people to reach out and go you know what we dig what you're doing why don't you come and play this this event that if you're booking you know if you had a booking agent that would call us we would never entertain you at all you know yeah right yeah because it's just part of the part of the system at that point right yeah <laughs> so that's on the that's something that we kind of like pride like right now we're still diy we like we've been offered uh different support tours and stuff but we're still operating as our own we're still able to do all the things we want we're just now accepting things that have never been offered to us before right but we're not tied down to like one agency or one thing so or one idea or somebody telling us what we can and can't do because i just don't think we're interested in that like at all like we want to we want to take our friends or we want well of course we want these like extra platforms and stuff like that but yeah, I don't know. Like well, being able to still be our own machine is like very important to what we are. Yeah. Well, you know, I I, I think um that's one thing I'll say about like Mastodon, right? Like they they take care of all their own merch and and all that shit. So so to even be at that level cuz they're shit at th this point they're fucking huge, you they're know. Gigantic. Yeah, gigantic. Yeah. And to still have their their hand right there, and they're still doing what they want when they want, it's not. You know, I, I think that's the ultimate dream for any band is like we're gonna play music and we're gonna do it our way. Who cares? Yeah, I think that I think that stubbornness and just like that honing by yourself, and then the willingness to fucking teach that kind of shit or fucking you know if people are asking is you know because you don't need you don't need a middleman necessarily you know what i mean of course there's benefits of course there's benefits to big name labels and stuff but but is to there... do the, to do the things that you like seek out of art to like you know be your music and fucking be with your friends and shit like that like you can do that and still make 
uh not a living but you know what i mean <laughs> but like no, you can make it work you can you, make the you can make the machine yourself you absolutely can make a living absolutely. you can make a really good living at it like look at look at tech nine right absolutely absolutely He's always done it himself everything that he puts out is his he owns all the publishing that in in my mind that's where bands really miss out they sign with with a larger label and that label is like hey cool we're gonna take publishing like for what you didn't write the fucking songs right right right, right so writing yeah no, i'm sorry yeah uh, so it's like uh i think now last thing i read he's he's worth almost a hundred million. I believe that. Yeah, like, absolutely. Holy shit. And he, he did it all himself. So yeah. I, I wholeheartedly believe that, you know, a, a DIY death metal band can do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. And like another one that comes to mind, of course, this is like mainstream, but it's still very underground, still very niche fucking insane clown posse. Yeah. They they never I don't to my knowledge they've never had a major major backing they built shit themselves it kept going it kept going, um, and like those kind of ethics those kind of things aren't you know Tech Nine and ICP they're not limited to fucking hip hop you know what right. I mean? like you just it is about the connections it is about actually getting to know the people that you're working with, and getting to know the scenes that you're fucking involving yourself in, you know where we. Like I said, Iowa City and Milwaukee or Springfield, Illinois, Springfield, Missouri. These are, of course, personal experiences, but that middle of nowhere rotation of getting to know the people and fucking the bands that you're hanging out with and becoming friends with is like so fucking important for for anybody. Getting to know your limits and doing it regularly and then spreading out more and more because you're still owning it is fucking the only secret you need to doing a band really that's, it's like that's it it's it's fucking hard work that i think a lot of people don't they don't understand going into it you know being in a band is i'm going to call it what it is it's a sales job you know uh, you're yeah, yeah yeah you know you're that's you're cool. out there to meet people to be in front of people sell t-shirts cds whatever you know whatever garb you have to get rid of or whatever merch you have yeah so it's it is a sales job and to to know the best salesman or salesperson knows their client. So you go out to Springfield, Missouri or Iowa City or Milwaukee. And when you go there, it's not just your client. You're seeing friends. You're seeing friends. All, every, every one of those places. Absolutely. You know, and that's so, so fucking, it's friends showing up to the show. It's friends that work at the fucking venue that are doing yeah. sound that are your promoters. Like, like you get stoked to see these people and they're stoked to have you back because, you know, you have a good work ethic. That shit goes so much fucking farther than what you think writing the perfect album will be or, you know what right. I mean? Like, being yeah. out there and meeting the motherfuckers is everything, is everything. <laughs> you it, know what I mean? It fucking is. And that's, yeah. you know, we, we look at, I, and I, I always hearken back to the early days of, of Thrash, you know, with Slayer and Metallica and anthrax and megadeth like what did those guys do they got in the fucking van or the u-haul or whatever they had and they went and they toured and they fucking toured and toured and toured and look at them now all of you know all of those fucking bands absolutely and that's always been the mantra of them all too is like let's go play yeah. let's see where we can go let's see where we can fucking go um and there's still the three of us that are the originals since 2017 of just like keeping that hunger of like, and then all, throughout those years, kind of like cultivating the the crew and the homies that are down to do it with us. Like we've had a bunch of different fill-ins on guitar, but um, for the last three four years, we've had the same bassist who's got the same mindset. So there's four of us now. Hell yeah! That are like, let's fucking go. Let's fucking play the world. Let's do, let's do us everywhere we can, dude. Because like, why the fuck not? <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's so that, but that's yeah. how you fucking do it, right? And yeah. and the long, I think the longevity of bands kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier: is you play music that is genuine and authentic to you. 
right? Like, oh, this fucking, this is what we want to do. Cool. That sounds great. Let's do that. You know, versus like, oh, this will sell us a million copies. Cause it, right. If that's your fucking mindset going into it, you, you get your frustration. Yeah. Your frustration at that first fucking no, you're like, but it's the best shit ever. Fuck you. I quit. Like, yeah, no, you're already beating yourself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. You know? So and like we, we ahead. can be like super proud of the stuff we've written, but that's because we know the like emotional attachment that we've all put into it. I don't, I'm never going to claim that like, you know, of course, just as a, like an artist and a self-aware artist is like, we're never, we're not writing the best shit ever, but we're writing shit that's important to us. That's real to us. And we're being us. I don't know if much more matters to that. You know what I mean? Like, and it we're doesn't. vibing. So. That, as long as the... we believe it, as long as we believe it, that's how you get other people to believe it. You know, that's, yeah. that's fucking pro wrestling. That's fucking art. That's everything. So. It's everything. hundred, per, yeah. hundred fucking percent, yeah. you know, and that's the funniest thing is that the best salesman believes in his product. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. How, how do you believe in it? You just be authentic with it, whatever the fuck yeah. it is. You yeah. know, that's, that's wherever where it is. Absolutely. Yeah. God, that's fucking great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For all you, Garrett and I are selling a fucking sales course. Check it out. Check it out. Uh, Ninety nine dollars. It's a sales course. We're gonna teach you how to really sell. Ninety nine dollars. That's all it takes. We're teach you how to sell you, and not yeah. your body, but you. You. So if your... you want to sell your body, you know. Uh, all right, we'll fix that in post. Uh... <laughs> oh fuck, that's good shit. So. You, you said you were like going through a, a dark time within the jaws of bereavement. Is, is there any, like anything you want to like talk about in there? Um, I mean, like just like what it is, what it is. Uh, I uh, was experiencing uh, a divorce, I guess, uh, not by my choice. Um, you know, some, uh, some betrayal, things like that so like uh it was just a dark period going into uh you know what around here in the north in the south and uh just the weather in general is already a dark yeah. time uh that you know they say the season in depression but uh it's very real especially in north dakota um especially in that december through march time where it's you know reaching 50 60 below with wind chills like it's fucking dumb. It's dumb. And we're still expected to go to work and fucking do all these things. But people are stuck in the middle of the road because plows can't keep up. And, uh, you know, uh, so I was going through, you know, a major um, just world shock of, uh, you know, uh, in the writing and touring recording process, I was fucking homeless for two months just getting my fucking life together. I was living in the tour bus that we fucking built. Um, You know, so like there's, there's things to be very thankful for. And like I said, concentrate on um, being able to uh, invoke slash relate the writing process to these real life holes and you know that that cathartic process behind it um which mall has always kind of been based on uh just completely unexpectedly for uh lp2 i guess so the album is definitely like layered in that grief and that kind of like directionless anger and just figuring shit out um not all of it but you know a good a good deal of it is um i guess i'm not like embarrassed to say that you know it's kind of like it's not like a full fucking directional attack on anybody, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's like it's it's real life feelings of like what's going on, processing that, you know, the the observation of the the world around you and how you're surviving is very much, I mean, dating back fucking four or five years of all, like where we kind of figured out what what is really us. Um, our demo in 2018 uh, soaked in penance list of the torture was like right after I broke my back in wrestling and like one of the fucking lines is like way to the world breaking your back spine or some shit I can't remember but uh, you know what I mean like yeah. finding that channel of like what's really going on and how to convey it and express it in a way that's 
digestible to other people that isn't very specific, but it is also coming from a real direction. Like, yeah. I love that. And then also taking it into scenes that make it death metal, you know what I mean? Like that, that like urge to dissect all the worst parts of yourself and fucking, you know what I mean? And like, I wrote like Carrie and Totem about that or Chain Hang and Drain, like different um, scenarios where it's like creating something better out of the destruction of yourself or, you know what I mean? Like things like that. And that's probably not original, but that's just like where I'm coming from. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, I, uh, original and authentic. I think if yeah. it's authentic, who cares if it's original? You know what I mean? Right. Um, right. I, and that's, you know, I, I think I, I've wrote for a long, for a lot of, a lot of years and I don't even play anymore, but it, you know, it helped me process a lot of things that were, were pretty fucked up. And I, I probably, I'm pretty fucked up now. So I probably need to like do some more shit, but for you, like writing that, did it, it helped you process and, and kind of get beyond those those dark times yeah absolutely absolutely and i and i recognize that and it's you know there's like a lot of uh self healing techniques self-soothing whatever it is like that artists do yeah. <laughs> uh, they, i know there's like a, an umbrella behind like artistry and like that major self-pity self-everything but um I don't know. I also do believe that there's a connection behind those types of people that are able to convey it into art for other people to like hear them or to digest. It's pretty cool to me. I'm not afraid to admit I'm just a nerd for shit that makes you feel right. You know what I mean? Well, um, so. you know, I, that's I think that's the beauty about music, though, right? Because even the fans, whether they're going to call it that or not, like I'm a fucking I'm, dude, I'm such a nerd for for anything like that. Right. Yeah. It, that's where the the connection really comes in and it doesn't matter if it's you know wrestling or or music or painting or poetry or whatever right, right? it it comes right. from a place in someone and someone you know people connect to it yeah and I, that's that's the most powerful important shit to me <laughs> that's yeah. what art is you know what i mean is like having that channel whatever that means so and i learned that through i learned that through wrestling you know i always loved uh like high school plays and bullshit like that you know what i mean so i was always down with performing with uh bringing something else out making something more funny or more cool than real life is so yeah. <laughs> um music and music was always always one of those main things like before i could fucking talk i was headbanging to blues and rock and roll records like that my parents still talk about so <laughs> hell yeah. yeah yeah um i've always just been that i guess so always been always been a, yeah. you know yeah. like connected with it and that's here we are fucking 30 years later <laughs> yeah well you know the i think the funniest thing is like you know with with mental health our, our biggest our biggest con issue with mental health is the lack of connection mm -hmm. you know when we're feeling connected and a lot of people are are connected through those things through music whatever you know it doesn't matter if it's country or classical or jazz or whatever right, right. like people connect with that um and it when you have that connection and you know like you able to go out on stage and put it out there and you i assume that you absolutely connect with the fucking crowd when you're there which you get off stage and you're probably exhausted but you you feel really um at peace almost you know? yeah no absolutely all of that is like 100 percent um especially with touring you know obviously every day you can't be fucking on as a human you know what i mean right so uh add that on to driving a long time or riding a long time loading in and then waiting to potentially you know whenever you fucking play um <clears throat> that everyday grind of that can be fucking wild but there's that 30 you know 30 minute 35 minute window of where we're on stage and it's like 
that connection is undeniable. You know, I mean, the whole room is there for that feeling. Yeah. And I'm feeling it. I know that our dudes are feeling it. I know that people who are fucking somehow learning the words to death metal songs screaming along with me, like that shit is fucking so powerful that the that's that's what I've been always about. I just finally found it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's it's so it's so real. Um, and just that vibe, you know, whether people are moshing or just fucking smiling, headbanging, stage diving, um, being dog shit tired and sitting behind the merch table and talking to people who are stoked about seeing the shit that you and your friends have been creating. Like, I don't know. There's this, like, you can't really beat that for me. Like, that's like. Fuck, I, that just feels so real to what I've always wanted, to what I've like felt. So, the the road, the seeing the world, the different cities every night, the fucking uh, meeting people who are into the same shit that you're into, who are down with the shit you're doing, who are supporting the lifestyle that we can live out there. Like that's, I don't know, that's fucking awesome, dude. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, it is. Yeah. It, it is, and that you know, to be able to connect with those people who are digging what you do is like, holy fuck. Like we just did this because it was cool and fun. And like, you dig it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Absolutely. And there's like some of those other, like just like deeper questions about like maybe a certain song or a certain thing. And you're just like, you know, we're from North Dakota, right? Like, (laughs) (laughs) like we're nobody, like, you know what I mean? Like, but like somebody from across the country, like, really fucking cares did that extra digging learn the words found their own connection like that type of shit is like you know the, like the dude this is fucking death metal like dude we're from three of us are from the same reservation in minnesota like right. like i said we're from north dakota like it's kind of wild that anybody even knows us so um yeah i've said this a thousand times but like we're we're always the group of people who are just fucking happy to be here and not afraid to fucking be us because it, it really is that you know i mean yeah. there's nothing to put on there's nothing to put on we might be fucking dog shit tired we might be a little bit drunk uh but <laughs> or a lot drunk whatever or a lot drunk, or a lot drunk. that's okay yeah. um <laughs> but we're gonna fucking be the same on stage and we're gonna be the same in person of just that that connection because that's like what makes us go yeah yeah, that's fucking cool. Uh, I can see it on your face talking to you, like how how uh, how much you enjoy it, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> you you meet people, you know. I like I meet a lot of people all the time, and and a lot of times it's um, blank stares. Mm-hmm. You know, just like they're doing their daily fucking grind: get up, go to work, come home, kiss the wife, eat dinner, go to bed, do it all over again. And then you meet people who are, um, they're where they're supposed to be. You know what I mean? And you can see it on their face. They're just like, man, this is just fucking awesome and appreciative. And like, that makes me happy as fuck. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I love, I love thriving off of that shit, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. I was like growing up what I was told, like my dad always thought I was going to go work in the factory. You know, I was going to retire from GM like him. And I was like, there ain't no fucking way. That's not my life. I, that's like, not me. Yeah, that's not me. I, I'm grateful that this is how we were raised, but I got other things that I want to do. Like, yeah. So I, I love it when other people are doing what they want to do and not just grinding in the factory to waste their years away, you know? Right. Right. And I did that. I did that for a little bit where I was like, hell yeah, this is like a lot of money. And then in it, I just knew it didn't fucking resonate with me. I was like, dude, I'm just a fucking number right now. Like, (laughs) yeah, you know, and I went to fucking back of house. I went to kitchen work, which is even more thankless, but uh, (laughs) a little more uh, leaning, appreciative towards uh, a touring band schedule. So I can just I can tell restaurants, hey. I'm doing this in a few months and I'm going to be gone for a month. So I'll be, I'll be back. You can't really tell that to the, uh, the working grind style. And that just, that just was never me. Like I hated, I hated being ground down like that. So 
Yeah, me fucking too. It was uh I'm I'm grateful for my wife, right? Cuz we got we were together for probably like 6 years. We were married some point in there at about 4 years. And 2 years into being married, she's like, "You hate your job." I'm like, "Yes. Yes, I fucking do." She's like, "Cool. Now it's your turn. I got through school. I'm doing my thing. Now you go do yours." Hell yeah. Now it's, you know, doing all the fucking random things. Uh oh. You're muted again. I don't know how to unmute you. There Hello? we go. There you are. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. There. I'm like, no. So you can't fix it, right? Can you fix that? <laughs> eh. Eh. Maybe. I might just let it roll because I don't I don't really do a lot of editing. Sure. Well fuck it, it dude. Fuck it. It's, it's the real shit. You see the fuck ups and everything. I wish I had my fucking so is there a song on in the jaws of bereavement that you like more than another song or that you connect with more maybe this okay yes for a couple different reasons um you know that i feel like that might be a general artist answer because like i do have attachments to every song right yeah. i really do um it's funny we got a we got a lot of uh, online hate for the title track um, because it's like so hardcore influence, yeah. Um, which is cool. I don't care. Like we've uh, clearly you're getting uh, introduced to Maul because we've always been a death metal band influenced by hardcore and sludge, like always for seven years now. So, um, but also you know there was like. Uh, there was like 50 comments fucking talking, hating us about hating on us on Reddit. So I'll take that as a win, dude. <laughs> like Reddit hates us. Hell yeah. We finally like no one, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, there's different attachments to every song. Um, for me, I mean, uh, in alluring deceit, definitely stands out um just as far as like it's so different than anything mall's done um it's very real it's very atmospheric but it's very like in your face it's a different delivery it's a different it'd be funny to show someone that who has never known us and say that's mall but then show them the rest of us you know what i mean uh, but it's not it's not not us i don't know I, don't know, I might be rambling, um, but that style, that message, that delivery, that that atmosphere of an alluring to sit is definitely something that stands out a lot to me. And that was originally only supposed to be an um, an interlude, um, but it just kind of grew on some parts. It grew on some dynamics. I started writing lyrics. I got inspiration it became its, its whole own thing. So we added a noise interlude at the end of it. So that's the end of side A on the vinyl. It's an alluring deceit. Um, and if you're listening to the record, that's the that's the middle of it. And then after that, silence is like our anthem. It comes in Midwest death. And it's just right away, Midwest death. And it's like, here comes the next chapter of like, oh yeah, we're we're atmospheric and like whatever, but we're also about to fucking stop blood some brains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So I don't know. I I that's the one track that st stood out as soon as you asked me that. Um, weaving cerebral horrors is like probably one of our more powerful tracks. We play it live. All we played it live for a few tours already. Um. I'm just really, really stoked on the arrangement of that song. Um, 
fuck me too that's like listening to the album that one sticks out to me the most and i'm like oh fuck, fuck. like as soon fuck as i heard it. it i was like oh fuck right and fuck yeah thank you dude thank you um and there's like you know there's some like black metal influence in there there's a lot of like that sludgy hardcore like crowbar yeah um left behind i am kind of influence in it um and not intentionally but that's just like the kind of things we're into you know what i mean um yeah fuck yeah um i could probably make an argument for every song on it of why i like it though so i won't go that in depth <laughs> no, I, I but i like the album it it's solid all the way through and it's um i think you know, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. I think each song is different enough to keep people interested to hear what else is coming because you're, you're jamming out and you don't know. And then, you know, you, you've got, I don't even remember what song, but that it's that fucking slow part with the little spoken word. It's like, hold on. Where did that come from? Wait, the, the, like the like minute long spoken word part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. And uh, damn, I had that spoken word part kind of written for that out of nowhere before the rest of the song was kind of written, which is fun. Because um, that intro kind of had a different, a couple different iterations. That is the the song "Unbridled Delusions." So yeah, there's a quite a not that long of a spoken word part, right? But it's like it's a little bit like. You know, it's like five, six measures or whatever the fuck. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, very, uh, God, I don't even know what inspiration that would come from. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know what directly, like, would influence that other than just, like, my own styling, my own attitude of, like, presenting things. Um, I have dug that in some more, like, metalcore style bands um i couldn't even name one off the top of that like give me that inspiration but well you, you know, know what it, so, it, like, breaking that up with like it could be even like a verse repeated but it's like spoken a little yeah. bit differently and i just i like that dynamic a lot of like really nailing what the song is about yeah now it it's you know it adds such a such a great dynamic to the album you know when everything's relatively heavy you know and then you get this soft spoken part it's like whoa hold on i need to like right. pay attention what's going on here right and like the riff and the rest of the song is still going pretty fucking hard you know what yeah. i mean but it's changing up that styling or that vocal delivery and like making it feel a lot more in depth than just a lot more screaming or you know what I mean yeah um because I think I, I do take a lot of pride in my lyrics that I write so like being able to present it like that is kind of fun I've always dabbled a little bit in the, the spoken word parts there's a little bit in seraphic there's a little bit in some other stuff um you know it, it really thing. it reminds yeah. me of um Metallica on Justice for All to Live is to Die. Fuck yeah. You know? Fuck yeah. That's probably their best album. Um yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's a toss up. Like Ride, Master, and Injustice, like all three of them yeah. are are powerful in their own Pretty right. Pretty perfect, right? Pretty perfect. Yeah. I love Injustice though. So do I. Um yeah. but yeah, I thank you for that. Yeah. There's this a this a fun dynamic of just not being in your face blah 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 but like making hearing these words that make you think about them is like fun to me as an artist someone who appreciates writing um hearing that kind of things so that can be obviously perceived very corny <laughs> and it can be very fucking corny don't get me wrong there's a little bit where i'm like is there too many fucking talking parts in this <laughs> but uh you know um I just think it's, it, I mean, obviously it's how you present it, how you, uh, again, back to like how you feel it and believe it. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not forced in there just because it's just like, that's how the song should feel. So. Absolutely. 
fits really well, really fucking well. I, you know, and the way the album flows, um, it flows really, really fucking well. I'm just, I'm a vinyl guy. So my, my question is what variants are you guys going to have with, with this? Um, all the variants are on the 20 bucks pin website right now. Um, so this is again, the first time that I've ever been like with the touring, like completely kind of hands off of like what things end up looking like. Mm -hmm. Not, not completely. Like I still completely, um, directed, inspired the artist worm walk to do our album cover. Um, you know, all the song titles, everything is still me, but like, uh, <clears throat> oh my God, I just blanked out. <laughs> we were talking about the vinyl, the vinyl, the vinyl variants. Um, so redefining darkness with seraphic punishment, we did three different pressings. Um, I was involved with all of those of like what they would look like, maybe the different colors we could do. And not, not that there's anything wrong with this. Is this is the first time that I was presented like, okay, here's our guy. Here's what he does. Here's what he thinks. And it, they were all great. They're fucking awesome. Of course, they are. 20 bucks spin destroys their vinyl variants yeah. all the time. They're, they're always so fucking cool. Shit that I could never think of. It's just the first time that we've dealt with that as a band. So um, there's three different uh, wild multicolor ways. There's the original black um i couldn't even tell you what the cassette shell looks like because I, I i'm really not sure um i know the cd label is more of that like uh golden orange yellow uh face of it um that matches like the jaws and the logo um but yeah it's kind of like fun to to be in the situation where i'm like oh shit like I trust these people, this platform, these designers. It's just like it's the first time it's like out of my Yeah. You don't have your finger on the pulse the whole time. Yeah. 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 But it was just cool because they, they came up with uh, a couple different really cool ones. There's like a, an orange and bone type uh flavor. There's one that matches more of the like the sea and the sky background with that like teal and blue. Um that might not even be the right colors, but uh, you know what I mean. You know, what yeah. I mean? Um, things things that are just uh, yeah. I trust Twenty Bucks and I trust that type of platform and what they do to uh, take care of us. It's nice because to be in that position when they're yeah. when you've got someone you can say, oh, okay, like I trust what you're doing. Awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. Even if it's brand new, I'm like, okay, hell yeah, of course yeah. I know, of course right. I know. I've just never been in it to be okay with it. So hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, first time for everything, and now yeah. it's just gonna like explode for you all. I feel like. So I, I have been on my own right, um, hiring different artists for each song. So there's a completely different style, a completely different direction um, with artists around that I know, um, and I've just been sending them the lyrics and the fucking song file. And I'm like, if you want to ask me anything, go ahead. But otherwise, just do. Your, I'm hitting you up because I trust your style. Yeah. Um, and we did that. They're online right now, like the uh, the single art for in the Jaws Agreement and the single art for Spontaneous Stigmata. Um, but yeah, I have uh, an artist working on every song pretty much, so we can have for different shirts or different things or but. Um, again, it's just kind of adding that complete different identity to every song by having a representation by uh, a different eye to, yeah. which is fun. Yeah, and how and fucking, yeah, how cool is that? Like, because how many people actually take take the time and the energy and put that much into each song, particularly? I just I love that idea. You know what I mean, because again, they're they're their own things, so. Yeah, And then we just meet so many cool people that are in bands or just doing art for bands or involved with the scene. This is like, I love your fucking work. Like if we can help each other out, let's fucking go. So. Hell yeah. Well, that's, you know, I think that's how uh, scenes or communities really like thrive is when everyone is helping everyone. 
you know, you, you've got obviously the artists, you've got the bands, you've got the promoters. And when, when everyone, when everyone's friends, it's like, well, fuck, I, I want to work together like you, like, shit, I want to take Redivider out on some dates with us. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. You know, yeah. you, because they're a great band and you're friends with them. Like this is. Yeah. Absolutely. We've yeah. done that so many times already you now with different people like, yo, we fuck with you. Like, you yeah. ready? Let's go. You got a you got a touring vehicle? Let's go. Cause that's fun to us. Cause like I know how to do those steps. Not saying that these other people don't, but like whatever wave we're building, fucking we fuck with you, come with us. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I love being able to facilitate that. I love being involved in any like any way of that, just because it's like this is the community that I've always been looking for. So it's fucking just just cool for everybody that uh i can connect with to be involved with it right um yeah hopefully and then and and then now being a part of it where it's like we're getting support offers with people that we like look up to or that people that we like brush shoulders with a little bit but it's like fuck like this is you know it's the same thing it's just a little bit more now we're in a different position we're like hey they've you know definitely heard of us or they've definitely fucked with us and it's like by what we've been doing so let's keep doing us and yeah. do it a little bit more so it's just yeah it's just kind of keep keeping that wave going and being cognizant of it because it's like we we put on so fucking hard for north dakota for fargo we're always 701 this fucking midwest at that like so uh yeah, it's just keeping that moving, just keeping that's, it moving. And that's it's how cool. it should be, right? Everyone helping everyone. Like fucking, you know, bands, bands that fuck with each other, they they should take oh. each other out. What band, is there a band out there that you guys really want to go out on the road with? Probably a few. Um, I feel like there's things that we've like been a part of that we've always been representing that other bands have been doing it on a bigger, more known scale. Um, there's a lot of cool fucking synergy right now with death metal and hardcore that we've like always been about. Um, you know, not from a bitter aspect by any means, but, uh, is this fucking, um, not from a bitter aspect, but, uh, like we grew up in the hardcore scene, we've always been kind of a death more death metal band influenced by that energy, by that like style, by that workings of how things go. Um, and it's cool as fucking shit to see band like legacy bands like Obituary and Dying Fetus on these hardcore fests. Yeah, and uh, you know, hardcore kids or newer people into the music scenes being like crazy down with it. You know, and there's the there's also the old head mentality of like this should never cross, this should never be like a bunch of posers getting into them through hardcore. It's like, no, dude, like I don't think any of that shit matters, of course. It doesn't actually, no. but um seeing that type of shit is like I don't know, stuff that I've always, like, it's it's the blending of my two worlds, you know what I mean? It's not the yeah. first time. I know Hatebreed has taken out Obituary and Six Feet Under and fucking the 90s, you know what I mean? But they were also getting hate all the time for trying to coalesce those things. Um, yeah, but and they still just, do it, which is fucking fantastic, right? Like, awesome. Because I'm with you. Like, you, you go to a show, and, like, I'm not opposed to going to just a hardcore show. I'm not opposed to going to just a metal show, but if we can throw both of those together, like actually hate breed and obituary played a, a LDB fest. Yeah. Which is, which is a fucking hardcore yep. fest. So. Yep. And that's fucking, you know, that's the shit that I was like alluding to was like, how cool is that to see? Yeah. And these fucking younger kids, these people who have never been, never been involved with the 35 years of obituary being like right. stoked on it you know what i mean yeah. and that's fucking there's no bitterness of that introduction like fuck that that's so cool or even people who are have been down with it and show out and that maybe that's their introduction to a hardcore fest like that shit's fucking cool too dude like yeah 
it's all the same fucking team. You know, if you take egos, you take fucking weird shit aside, maybe some fashion stuff, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, you know, it's all the same fucking team. We're all doing the same shit. Um, DIY agents or not, um, a lot of them are the same venues. A lot of them are the same kids feeling those scenes. Yeah, it's weird to have. It's weird to have any kind of barrier. So that's the oh. shit that we've always kind of been about, dude. We have hardcore attitude, death metal music, oh, whatever variance that means. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, you know, for so long it was like. You know, for me growing up, it was always like, if you're a metal kid, you're a metal kid. You don't listen to hardcore. You don't listen to punk, mm -hmm. you know, and those worlds didn't, they, they didn't cross, but I'm like, but I, I like it all. I don't fucking care if I'm supposed to be a metal kid or whatever. Like, right. I like, I like the music. I fucking, right. who gives a shit? Let's just go to the show. Right. Like the fucking band for the band. Yeah, I like heavy things. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, all right, Garrett. I know you got things to do tonight. Um, I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your night to come and chat with me. Um, Absolutely. I've had a lot of fun talking with you. I think you're a cool dude. I fucking really, really dig Thank the you. fucking in the jaws of bereavement. I it's it is such a a solid fucking album. Um, I think there's yeah. going to be a lot of pleased people when it comes out. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you giving it the listen that you do and then taking the time to want to talk to us. So that's, that's badass, dude. Again, just some dudes from fucking North Dakota. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anywhere that... in the country taking the time to know us, to talk to us, to fucking promote us, to any of that shit is fucking crazy. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Appreciate that shit. It, hell yeah, dude. That's how we that's how we fucking get you guys out there to more people, whatever, it, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Fucking that, way, that way you keep making more music so we can enjoy more music. <laughs> keep it going. Hell yeah, dude. Well, go have yourself a great night. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yep. See ya.